Welcome to Veris Vignettes. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this digital photography tutorial. This is part three in the multi-part series, The 10 Channel Workflow. In this phase of the workflow, we've enhanced the tone and contrast of the RGB image and are now ready to work on the color. For this, we will move into LAB. LAB is ideal for manipulating the saturation and amount of color variation in the image. To do this, we will duplicate the RGB document and convert this copy to LAB. We will achieve the saturation effect by changing the layer blend mode to overlay and turn off the L channel contrast, leaving only the A and B channels with enhanced contrast and thus color saturation. Finally, to fine-tune the color, we will use additional advanced blending options to control the color in the interaction of the layers. So here's where we left off with our image. We've improved the tone and contrast using RGB channel luminosity, and now we need to work on the color, which is still a bit lifeless and drab. This calls for a move into LAB. To preserve my work and maintain flexibility, I will duplicate this document and work on that copy in LAB. So I'm going to go up here to the Image menu and select Duplicate. Okay, so this duplicate uh, we're going to convert to LAB, so I'll go ahead and name that right now. And very important I want to duplicate the merged layers. So I don't want to end up with a layered document. I want uh, everything to be merged into one layer so I can convert that into LAB. So I'll check Duplicate Merged Layers Only and click on OK. And now you see up here we have a new tab with uh, the new name for our duplicate document. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that image mode LAB. All right, so now I end up with a document that is LAB and that has LAB channels. Uh, L stands for the lightness channel. And this is all the luminosity uh, and tonal value in the image. The A channel represents the green magenta uh, color of the image. So lighter tones are more magenta and darker tones are more green. B is the yellow-blue uh, color in the image where lighter tones are more yellow and darker tones are more blue. And you'll notice the channels are very kind of dull, um, low contrast because the color has no saturation. And we have a unique uh, uh, opportunity here to adjust the saturation of the image using a layer blend mode. So I'm going to copy the background layer here and change the layer blend mode from normal to overlay. Now overlay is a is a blend mode that increases the con the contrast in the underlying image. And in this case, we're using the image itself applied against itself to increase the contrast. And uh, you can see we also have a sort of enhanced color saturation here. But I'd like to be able to get at the color saturation without the value contrast, which is just too much here. So here's the little trick. If I double click in this empty part of the layer here in the layers panel, I will pull up our layer style dialog and of course we're interested in the blending options in the center of the dialog. So fortunately I can uncheck the L channel here and that will remove the luminosity contrast and leave me only with the A and B channels receiving the extra contrast and thus we get extra color saturation. So you can see uh, now we have enhanced color saturation and uh, maybe a little too much color saturation for the red church. So let's see what we can do here. We have lots of controls here in this dialog. Let's look at the blend if sliders for the A channel. 
So remember I said the A channel controls the green magenta uh, color in the image. So since the church is more magenta than it is green, I can remove the sort of red color saturation by moving this white point slider over here in this layer. As I move it to the center, you notice how the church now has lost its additional saturation. Here it is at full saturation. Here it is no extra saturation. Because we are seeing through to the bottom layer here, everywhere the image is more magenta than it is green. And I can perhaps bring back maybe a little bit of that magenta saturation, not all, just a little bit, by using the split slider trick here. I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and split apart the slider here to give me a more gradual transition instead of an abrupt stop where we get to uh, uh, less magenta over here. We're gradually getting a little more magenta into the image by moving the split slider over. Okay, and that's looking pretty good to me. Um, I think my blue color is just fine, the, the green color is just fine. So now we'll say OK. And you can see as I turn this on and off, I've improved the color saturation quite a bit. So now the next step is to get this color back into our RGB document. And I could flatten this and then just drag it over on top of the RGB document, but I want to preserve my options here. So I'm going to merge the result of these two layers that are being calculated in overlay mode. I'm going to merge the result be between these two layers into the top layer, a new top layer. And I'm going to do that by holding down the Option or Alt key and in the Layer Options Flyaway menu here I will select Merge Visible. And so now I've got a more saturated version that's the result of these two layers here in the top layer. Okay. So now I can take, since this top layer is selected, I can simply drag that over to the RGB document. So I'm going to drag from the middle of this window and drag on top of this RGB tab over here. But first I will hold down the Shift key. This allows me to drag it and drop it exactly in the center of the other document and it'll be in registration. And it looks like I've dropped the the image into my luminosity stack here, so it's not going to work for me. I'm going to drag this layer up to the top and then unclip it because I don't want it interacting with this red luminosity layer down here. I want it to be operating independently at the top of the layer stack. So I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and you'll notice here now as I move the cursor between those layers it changes to indicate that I'm now able to unclip that color layer. And now here I have the full color layer. I can use it in normal mode but if I change the mode from normal to color, I can now alter how the underlying luminosity affects the contrast of the image and the color will stay preserved here. The saturation will stay preserved in this layer. In fact, I'm going to rename this layer color. And you can see here if I if I uncheck, you know, turn off some layers, I can alter the, the, the saturation of the image, or the, the contrast of the image, but preserve the color saturation, which is up here in this top layer. So I have a lot of flexibility here. In fact, if I change my mind about the color, I can come back to my LAB document and uh, alter things here. So let's go ahead and throw away this top layer, because I'm going to change the interaction between these two layers. In fact, let's add even more con uh, color saturation by duplicating this overlay layer. 
and now it's gotten really really saturated the blue is way too much let's uh, modify that I'll double click call up my layer style again and looking at my blending options here uh, let's take the blue out of the calculation so I'm gonna move this black slider over to the center and now I'm not adding any additional blue saturation uh, I don't need any additional red saturation either but I do like what's happening to the green grass so let's eliminate the additional red saturation here by moving the slider over to the center uh, when you're e e at exactly 128 that's the mi middle, middle gray and now anything that's darker than middle gray is adding green saturation to the image okay so now I've altered again the color I've added even more saturation so I will again merge visible by holding down the option or alt key going over to my layer options here and selecting merge visible while I have the option or alt key held down and now I get a new color layer at the top and I can drag that on top of the RGB document so let's do that I drag that over place it at the top of the layer stack here and it's coming in underneath that top layer from before so let's go ahead and move that all the way to the top and I'm gonna throw away the other color layer because I don't need it change my layer apply mode here from normal to color and I'll go ahead and rename this layer as well okay so now I have a lot of additional color in the image but I still have the flexibility of turning on and off layers or adjusting how the contrast is working independently of the color saturation so I've preserved maximum flexibility and now we're ready to move on to another uh, another technique here so we've we've seen how uh, in the RGB image I have red green and blue channels and in our LAB image I have L, A, and B channels but one of the unique opportunities we have now with two separate documents that are in two different color spaces is I can now grab some of the black and white luminosity from the LAB document and use it to my advantage and so looking here at the B channel in the LAB document I can see that my foliage which is more yellow than it is blue uh, is quite a bit brighter here and one of the things that I'd really still like to do here is lighten up the green trees so it seem still a little dark to my taste so let's let's do that um, so we're gonna do a, use a little trick here I'm gonna make an empty layer at the top and uh, we're going to put the B channel in this layer so I'm just gonna label that B and I'll come up here to image apply image now the apply image dialog is very powerful because I can go and grab any document that's open as long as it's got the same pixel dimensions as my document I'm working with and of course our LAB uh, duplicate has exactly the same pixel dimensions and I'm going to select here the B channel okay it doesn't really matter the blending uh, mode that I have here because I'm just going into an empty channel so it's just taking it and placing it in normal mode into the empty channel okay so let's now see what we can do with this um, if we change the apply mode from normal to overlay the overlay calculation is going to lighten everything in this top layer that is lighter uh, than 
medium gray, and that would be the trees. And it will darken everything that's darker than medium gray, which would be the sky. So let's take a look at that. Let's see what that does to the color image. And as you can see, it's quite dramatic. I've, I've really added a lot of highlights to the trees here and the sky's also gotten darker and even more dramatic. So I like that. I like what it's doing there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I like this foreground area. So I can use a layer mask here to hide that foreground stuff. I'm going to click on add new layer mask icon down here and then I'll use a gradient to block out this foreground area. So I'm using a, uh, a gradient here, the foreground a transparent gradient. I could make any gradient I want there, but this one is, is going to work for me. So I'm going to click and drag where, wherever I start my click, the gradient will be black and then it will gradually ramp off and I can hold down the shift key here to constrain it so it's perfectly perpendicular. And now I've hidden that foreground area and what I have now is the highlights on the trees. I've really turned the lights on on this image and we're, the image is really starting to take shape. But we're not quite done yet. We've worked with red, green, and blue, and we've we looked at the LAB document and worked with the A and B channels. There's one more color space we have yet to explore, and that's CMYK. So we will do that in the next tutorial.